that today, man, today is a day about talking about wealth. God is about to bless this place, and He's going to bless our socks off. I think we're going to, you know, it'll be such a blessing on your life that God, can, you won't be able to contain it. Be faithful to Him, honor God in everything that you do. Uh, serve Him, be obedient to Him, love Him, seek after Him, and God will pour out a blessing in your life that's unbelievable. I believe that with all my heart. I think the church today is, is uh, it's, it's, life has got us so busy that it's difficult to just love on God. Amen? We just got so much responsibility, so many things we have to do. You know, it just drives us crazy, and then we have to find time for God. But I want, to, I want you to just, if you're thinking this morning, reverse that. If I would take time for God first and then do my busy stuff, I think life would be a whole lot easier. Amen? Amen. Come on, how many could witness that? You know, when you take time in your morning to say, okay, God, I'm going to get up a little early or whatever it's going to take, I'm going to spend time with you. I roll out of bed. I told you guys, I roll out of bed now. I roll, I roll out of bed after Tina. I, I'm, I'm that, guy, that guy. And uh, so I reach over my phone and I turn on my Bible app. And I read the verse of the day, and I read a proverb. Anybody read the proverb 31 today? It talks about everything. Thinks the second part is about the the, the, the proverb the 31 proverb 31 the woman that's righteous and, and loves her husband and does all great things and honors her husband in the in the marketplace and she she knows how to handle her wealth and take care of her kids and all that wonderful stuff. So you can read that. The first part is very interesting. The first few verses. So I won't. I'll let you go ahead and read those later. But God is, really wants to bless us and bless you. And, and part of that is just putting God first. Amen? Really putting Him first in our thoughts and our life and all that stuff. And so here's a, a young man that was challenged by Jesus. And I love the first part of this. If you just would just go up to verse 13, 19, 13, before we get to that part. I just want to read this part. I love this part. People brought a bunch of little ones to Jesus. Matthew 19, it says, Then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hand on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought the children. That's kind of, they're like, hey, don't bother Jesus. He's really busy, right? He's like laying hands on sick people and he's praying for people and healing, you know, raising up the dead and all that. Don't bother the children. That's not true. Look what Jesus says next. He says, Let the little children come unto me. Do not hinder them. Uh, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Praise God. So like when I was watching Isabella, when I was talking about tithing and offering and stuff, she's like, she's shaking her head, yep, yep. And she was just right into it. She knew that it was true. I mean, she didn't know, but it was truth pouring into her, and she was just reacting like a little child. There's faith in a little child, right? So you get blessed with $10,000 in, in your salary and offering, I mean, in all that you have, and then you say, oh, I'm going to be like this <coughs> fellow, I'm just going to give, like God told me to give, and I'm going to give half of the, like Asia said, here, have it all, God, I love that. What a great example to us, amen? So don't hand to your wealth too much, because you might lose it. That was free. All right. Let's go to the scriptures today. Um, in verse 16, it says, now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. He was speaking about himself. If you want to enter if you want to enter, if you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which one? the man inquired. Jesus uh, inquired. Jesus replied. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are all summed up right there. And these I have kept, the young man said, what do I lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad, because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be 
say. Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, impossible, but with God all things are possible. Father, we thank you today for your word. Father, I thank you for the love and the grace that is bestowed upon everyone in this room. Father, I ask that you just open up our hearts, open up our minds, open our spirit up to receive what you would want us to hear this morning, individually and corporately. Father, I thank you so much for that. Let Jesus be glorified in my words, Father. In his name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So here we have a young man going to Jesus, and he's asking that question, what do I need to inherit eternal life? And he goes right immediately to the commandments. Jesus knew his heart, so he goes right to the Ten Commandments. Does that mean, or or the, he didn't say all his commandments, because what he left out is the first three, uh, which is, talks about our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So go to Deuteronomy, if you will, with me, and chapter 5, and I want to go through if you will, the Ten Commandments. Andy had shared a little bit. I just want to share two with you. And I was able to share these yesterday at our at the uh, Solemn Assembly that Tina and I were invited to go to in, in Poplar Creek. It was an amazing time of worship. It was an amazing time of hearing the Word. It was an amazing time of giving God honor and praying for the for Milwaukee in that area and uh, for our country and for our president and for all the things that are that are needy for racial uh, tensions that are in Milwaukee. Um, it, it's, it was it was really awesome because Milwaukee has um, the worst ra ra uh, racial relations in all the country. The city is so divided, even by streets, and where you know what, uh, all those, uh, if you've ever been to Milwaukee, all the highways and how they go certain different directions, it's like all, all black on this side, all white on this side. It's just, this way it is. It's 100% like that. All over the city. And you, you can't go, there's no, and there's no like, um, like you don't go into a black neighborhood and a black guy doesn't go into a white neighborhood. It's really tense there in, in Milwaukee. And uh, uh, the teenage pregnancy rate is out the window. The uh, uh, infant mortality rate is the highest in the country is Milwaukee. I mean, so we have some, we need to pray for Milwaukee. And I asked them to pray for Madison, so we have our own issues here. But, you know, they really prayed for that. It was really amazing. We had a couple gentlemen that spoke that was just, uh, God sent to be part of that group, that, that, that service, and Tina and I got the privilege of being there. And we went through all of all the commandments, and then we looked at examining them. I'm not going to do that with you, but I'm going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through two. All right? I want you to examine two and, and, and see how it fits in your life. So the first one I want to talk about, you know, the first commandment is to, um, to have another God before me, right? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. So in the, the children of Israel, it's Deuteronomy 5, verse 6 of our reading. So remember, the children of Israel were captive in, in Egypt, and they were, they were delivered by all the different plagues, and all the things that happened, they were delivered. And now they were wandering around the desert, they going up to Mount, they, won, they finally made it to Mount Sinai, and Moses goes up and gets these commandments, and these are the commandments that Moses got. And we see them on our public square, we see them everywhere all over our country, because our country is based on these things. Uh, from our foundation. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. And for us, bringing us out of Egypt is what? Bringing us out of our sinful life. Right? So Egypt represents, every time you read about Egypt in the Word of God, you see it's about our sinful life, our old life, our old identities, not our new identities with Him. So He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, uh, out of slavery, which we were when we were in sin. You shall not have no other God before me. You shall not make for yourself, or number two is make for yourself um, any idols in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water below. Don't make a statue of something and worship it. God's saying, I'm the creator. I did all this. Don't worship things you make with your hands. They, they'll dissolve and go away. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the father to the third generation. How many has, um, this is kind of interesting, won't go too long on this. How many know, like, your parents, your grandfather, your father, or maybe your great-grandfather never served the Lord? There were, uh, whatever issues in their life, they were sin. They never acknowledged God. They never worshipped Him. There's a curse on your on gen three, three generations, and you can break that curse because now, as a believer, you're covered with the blood of the Lamb. 
right? And you no longer have to identify what, what your ancestors did wrong. You are now starting a, a new thing for look what it says here. It says you're starting something new. Now that you're a Christian, this curse is broken off of you. And now um, the third and fourth generation for those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations, to all those who love me and keep my commandments. So because now you're a believer and you're serving God and the love of God is in you, you're, you're bringing blessings to a thousand generations. What does that mean? It means forever. It means it's going to go on forever. That you're, because you stopped the curse of unbelievers in your family, and now uh, uh, we have generations that will change. And, and our families like that. Our, our, our families weren't like, Tina and I, our families weren't really serving God. You know, we went to church, we did some things, but there's no love, there's no worship, there's no honoring God in our everyday life. But when Tina and I became believers, we said, no, we're not going to be that. We are now going to, for a thousand generations from us, are, going backwards, are going to serve God and love God. Now, I guess because of that, our, our parents now are, are changing their hearts toward God. There's something happening in, above our generation, above me, because we love them, and we honor them, and I'll show that in just a minute, so they can love God, and that will change the curse, because the blood can change everything. It can make everything new, amen? Praise God, hallelujah, I'm a new person. Verse uh, number two, uh, uh, three, this is the one I want to share a little bit more on, because the first three commandments were about God, and our relationship with Father God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord your God will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Now, this is very interesting because when I researched this, when I, I grew up learning that if I cussed and used God's name in, in, a, in a swear word, that was bad. Anybody learned that, right? And that's rightfully so part of this. But if you go and just dig just a little deeper to understand the fullness of what it's saying here, I will not misuse I will not misuse, and if you look at the King James Version, it says, I will not take the Lord's name in vain. Right? I mean, the, the other version of the Bible, there's other versions, and Amplified says the same thing. I will not take on God and use his name wrongly. Here's my Pastor Bob's interpretation of that. I will not put on, because in Genesis tells us that we are created in the very image of God. Male and female, he made them in their image, correct? So we're going to take on God's image, and we're not going to use it in vain. We're going to be Christ-like, we're going to be an example of Christ to the world around us, and we're not going to do it in vain. What does that mean? I'm going to take on the image of Christ, I'm going to be like Christ, I'm going to be like God, I'm going to take on that image, and then I'm not going to misuse that image. So you know, you say to people, say, I'm a Christian, and then you hear them cussing. You hear him swearing, you hear him stealing, you hear him uh, acting uh, uh, unrighteous. You go, well, how can you take on that? So I take on the image of God, but now I'm misusing it because I'm saying I'm a Christian or God-like, and I'm not acting like God. Can anybody say amen? It's like, oh, me or mine. Come on, come on. This is good stuff, right? They say we're, we have God's image in us because we're created in His image. He knew us before the foundations of the world. He knew He knit us together when we were in our mother's womb. He created us in His image to be Christ bearers, to show Christ to the world. And then we misuse it. That's what this, this is what verse, to me, this is what this verse is saying. We shall not use the Lord God name in vain. All right? And it goes into cussing and swearing and all those other things too, because I think what happens, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's what's in us is the image of God in us, is the love of God in us, is the word of God in us. When it's in us, then all the junk has to come out. There's no, not, not, I mean, you can't have junk in your heart and then have God's word in your heart. Something's got to move. Oh, I got hurt really bad in my life. If that's why I'm all grumpy or I'm Italian, that's what's up, you know, I'm a, whatever my heritage is, right? So I use that as an excuse, and it's an excuse that we hang on to, and really God wants to take that excuse off your heart and put in his love and his grace and his mercy so we can actually be the image of God. So it's got to change my heart. I'll change my heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh. Let it be soft and tender towards the things that you. Let me hear your voice, Holy Spirit, when you're teaching me and correcting me. Let me be open to change in my life so I can be the image of God and I can honor you with my life. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Amen? That's my version of this. I don't know what else. I studied this out, Greek, Hebrew, all that stuff, and I found out that if you just take a moment to go study this, you'll see that what I'm saying is true. We are not to take 
the Lord's name in vain. Cussing and saying things bad is part of that, but that's not the whole thing. It's what we reflect to the world around us. So this young, young ruler is like, yeah, I, I, I do that. You know, Jesus didn't even mention these, these first three. He just mentioned the last ones. The other one I want to talk to you about today is I was able to share yesterday was uh, honor your mother and father. This is pretty interesting because it, it says that we should, it, this is the only verse or only uh, commandment would have promised. If you honor your mama and daddy, if you would put them in a place of honor, if you would hold them up and worship them in a sense, that's what it says, then you would live long. I love this verse. We used to pray this over our children all the time. As soon as we had charity, honor us. We say it when they're sleeping. We tell them that they uh, honor. When we had arguments, when we became teenagers, okay, you can argue, we can disagree about stuff, but you will not dishonor us, right? You honor us because we want you to live long. We want you to have the blessings that come with honoring us, right? So one day I'm preaching on this. It was a while back. It was a couple years ago. I'm preaching on this, and the Lord tells me why I'm preaching. What about your mom and dad? Me. I'm speaking to you, but I'm listening to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is telling me, what about your dad? Because my dad was a real hard person to get along with. How, you guys, most of you met my dad. He's been here before. We actually had Father's Day together with my dad, myself, Andy, and Andy was on Skype, and then Christopher, I think. Was Christopher here? Yes, Christopher was here. So we, were, we, had, we shared a Father's Day together because my dad is now a believer and a follower of Jesus. But when we grew up, he wasn't. And he was really, uh, he was really a rough dad. I mean, I have a rough dad, you know, talk rough to us. Uh, hit us. He didn't really hit us. He kicked us. That was his favorite thing to do. You know, like, uh, I can tell, I'll tell a story. Uh, he'll probably watch this on the video, so I'll try to be careful. But I remember when, we were little, when I was a little boy, and it was in the middle of winter, and Dad had to work on the carburetor of a car. Anybody know what a carburetor for a car is? We have fuel injection now, but in a carburetor. Had to be adjusted. And I was holding the flashlight. And I was cold, so you know, I mean, you can't move a flashlight and freezing, and then he just got up, went out and just yelled at me and kicked me. I still, it's like hurts in my heart from way back then. It's over now. I'm sure I share it differently. You know, God healed all that. Which, praise the Lord for that. But it was like, he was just, you know, I said, but I had to come to a point where I had to honor him and love him. Made a decision to call him every, every month, every couple weeks. Have a conversation with them, right? How can you honor and love somebody if you don't talk to them and get to know them, right? So I tell them, and then we had an opportunity to share some of the hurts that had happened over the years. We shared that with them. And he was like grieved because now he's a believer. He didn't know he hurt us, or he didn't know that happened and how it affected us. But now he knows, and the healing's in his life too because of it. So we honor our mom and dad. We have to honor them. So I, I, I would challenge you with this too. This is, this is uh, one of the last things in this verse that Jesus told the rich man and ruler was, do you honor or you honor your mother and dad? He said, yes, he did. Honoring your parents. Now, um, don't raise your hands, but in your heart, do you place your mom and your dad in a place of honor? Even if, they're pa even if they're older and they're passed away, have you done that? If you haven't, I think so. I want to go. I want to go there. Right? Can I go there right now? I think God wants to heal those hurts. Can I go there right now? Can you turn the heat down because it's hot? And maybe because I have my sweater on. But um, uh, God wants to heal your heart right now. Amen. God wants to take the pain of the disappointment that was put on you by your mom and dad, or maybe a grandparent. Maybe you were abandoned. Maybe you were um, uh, were abused. Maybe um, verbal abuse. But what it is just as painful and powerful and hurtful. Um, I want you to think. Maybe we just close our eyes right now. Let's, let, let me just take a take a moment. The children have to learn to honor their mom and daddy too. Father, Father, I just pray for everyone in this room right now. Father, you know every broken heart, every spot that's been um, that's been hurt by our parents, God. I, I live that, Lord. I know how difficult it is, Lord. I just pray, God, that you would start a healing process right now. First of all, just surrendering that pain over to you, Lord. And secondly, Lord, just bring healing, I pray, to that spot in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus.
for the healing that you provided for us through your death, through your death and resurrection. Father, the, the abandonment or the, the hopelessness, the, the hurt that's been caused by words that were said or actions that were done to us, Lord God, I pray for your healing to come down right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, you love everyone here, that's here. You are the perfect dad. You are the perfect father. Father, just pray and touch every heart right now. Let's go back to the, the chapter 19, and as I finish up here, uh, thank you, Jesus. And I want to, can I just be bold? I want to say, if you have uh, a parent wound, I can say it that way, if you have a wound in your heart from your father or from your mother, and uh, you want to talk about that more, would you say, would you, be, would you mind talking to us about that? Because I believe it's, sometimes we have, it's a, more things that need to happen, not just in one conversation. We can talk about it and help see you fully delivered from that. Um, that hurt. Father, thank you so much for that. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so this um, this rich young ruler uh, did, kept all his commandments, right? He, he kept them and he did that. And then um, Jesus challenges him even more um, to, to uh, let me find here, And he says, or did Jesus answer him? What the young man says, what do I lack in verse 20? In verse 21, Jesus answered him. And Jesus, you know, Jesus demonstrates the love of the Father. Jesus is showing his God's love while he's walking on the earth. But it's also one of those love that, like, okay, let me just get right to the point here. Let me, you know, let me show you where you need to change. If you want to be perfect, go and sell your possession and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, then come follow me. Now, this guy, I don't mess had great wealth. I think God, I think God and his wisdom, if he would have gave it all away and followed Jesus, he would have got more. He would have been blessed more. He would have, he would have, God would have used whatever, however he got this wealth that he inherited or he earned it. Maybe he earned it, that's why he couldn't give it up. Maybe he spent a lot of time, you know, creating something, some business, and he made a lot of wealth, and his blood, sweat, and tears went in that business. He was wealthy, and he had a lot. And he was still obedient to God because he kept the commandments, so he loved God, but he just, you know, I, one more thing, he was hanging on to his wealth. And what is interesting, Jesus says, if you give this up now, You'll have treasures in heaven. If you give up your wealth now, if you give up what you have now, there's going to be something greater for you in heaven. And we don't see that because it takes faith to believe that God's going to take care of us now. And he's going to provide such a blessing for us later on. We don't see that, right? We don't, we're just in America, we have always about giving. How many of you watch TV like on a regular basis? I hate commercials. I mean, it's like everything. You've got to have the newest car. They're already talking about 2017 cars. I mean, it's not even 16. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. You've got to have the best this and the best that and the, the newest iPad or newest i iPhone or i iPad or whatever the next generation is. And everybody's got to get it. And the sales go crazy. I don't, I don't, I would not stand in line for hours waiting for a phone. It's just ridiculous to me. But people do that. They spend billions of dollars on those things. And everybody has one. It's great. That, as long as you make a Bible app, I'm, I'm cool with it. But anyway, you know, we have to have the newest, the best, and everything. It's just it's challenging. And the world's just pounding you all the time. You've got to have, you've got to have, you've got to have. And in Christianity, and seriously, Christianity is just it's opposite of the world, isn't it? Isn't Christianity like, I love my neighbor? I'll take care of my neighbor? I'm going to go get to know my neighbor? I want to find out about my neighbor? I'm going to love on them, I'm going to buy them pies for Christmas, and I'm going to buy, buy up to a barbecue. I want them to come to know Jesus. So I don't just like go to my house, park my driveway, run to my house, and I don't talk to anybody. I'm not that guy, and I hope you're not either. Because God wants to demonstrate his love to the world, and we are the, we are the ones that do that. And sometimes it takes what we have 
wealth, well, I'm just talking about money, because you talk about money. What we have physically in finances to bless other people so they can see the love of God. Is that okay? Sometimes I might have to get sacrifice myself, my things, to bless other people so they'll come to know the fullness of God's love. That means I have to give up what I have. Well, I earned it. That's my stuff. That's what I... Yeah, you... Let's be honest. You don't have anything unless God blesses you with it. You don't have grace unless God sent His Son to die for you. You don't have forgiveness of sin. And it goes deeper than that. It goes all that way into your heart, your hurts, your pains, your wealth. Everything that you own is the Father's. Amen? Say amen. Come on. You know that. I know that's hard. My television says God's. My crossbow is God's. I honored my father-in-law this year. Because um, he's getting a little older. He can't get out hunting like I used to go. You know, I know you guys know this story, but I just want to share this. You know, so when we bought the crossbow, it cost, I mean, I researched and it was money. So I had saved up some money driving. And uh, besides our savings, and, and I bought, we bought a crossbow. Tina said, let's go, let's get this one. We did research on what was a good one, what was a not so good one. I didn't want the best, I just want something that was gonna actually do the job it was supposed to do without wounding an animal and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so when we were driving, we left Cabela's and on the way home I said, when I get my first deer, I'm gonna give it to her father. Why? I mean, I mean, you never heard of that. No hunter gives up their animal. I mean, you earned that. You worked for it. You went out, got up early, went out to the woods, rattled that thing in, made it all the work for it, shot that thing, dragged it out of the woods, you know, and take it to the house and cut all the meat off the bones and put it in, and, 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 I, and I said, it's yours. He was, he didn't know what this, he didn't understand that love. He didn't understand it. I just want to show love to him. I want him to know the love of God because in his life, I know his, his past, and he, it, there was no love from his dad. He didn't have that. He was like, you know, he was treated bad by his, by his grandfather. And so he didn't know that love. He doesn't understand it, even to this day. And so, but he's getting, I think, because of just a deer, I mean, it's cracking that, that hardness that he has in his heart, just from guarding himself from being hurt again. And I want him to see that, I want him to know God. I want him to love God. I want them to have the peace of God that I have when I'm going through trials and tribulations. It's amazing. Jesus challenged at his wealth. Listen, you're going to give up your wealth now, follow me, and you will have riches that you can't even contain. You're going to be blessed. I don't know what that's going to look like in heaven. I mean, I look at Revelation, I see the throne room, and I see the glory of God, and I see angels singing, holy, holy, and worshiping Jesus, and I don't know what that means. I don't mean it's going to drive a Cadillac and get to heaven or have the best horse. I don't know. You know, are you going to have a robe that's all full of jewelry or diamonds or whatever, the best house in heaven? I don't know what that's like. I just know that God has something better for me than what this whole world can offer me. And I'm willing to say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you all the days of my life. I hope when I'm preaching, I just pass out and die right here. That would be my happiest moment right there. You know what I'm saying? I want to. I want to. I want to be giving a fifteen dollars to a poor person, and I die right there. If that's what happens. That'd be awesome. I want to serve God. I want my grandchildren to love the Lord. I want you to love God with all your heart. Listen, there's two commandments, two only that Jesus said. If you do these things, everything you read in the law is fulfilled. In those two things. Everybody knows this, right? I'm going to say it anyway. Everybody knows, but I repeat it. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you. Love God. Then you have to examine that. Take a moment. Do I love God? Will I do what He says? If you love God, there's, there's no obedience is an issue. You do whatever He says. If I love God and the Holy Spirit says to me, "Go do this," then you're going to do it. Amen. God, our Father loves you have so much more for you. That's what this young man, listen, you think you have it all? You got the best of everything? You're a wealthy person? Guess what? There's more. I have more for you. Just come follow me and I'll show you. I mean, what more? I mean, think about this. You're in, uh, you're on Main Street, downtown. And there's a crippled person there. And the Holy Spirit tells you, go over and pray for that person. 
and you lay hands on that person, and God heals that person. You share that what happened, and they come to Christ, and there's joy. What? How can you put a dollar value on that? Or you take your neighbor or your friend that you've been witnessing or sharing with, and all of a sudden I'm looking to go one more time. Go one more time and share Jesus with them. Go one more time and pray for them. And you do, and they come to the full knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Wow. I don't know about you, but when God uses me like that, I'm, ha I, I'm happy all day. I, I, I can't even contain myself. I don't just, I, I just, I'm just joyful. I think it's a privilege that God would use Bob Castro to help change a life or help somebody come closer to Jesus. On Monday night, when our missional community group is done, what our Bible study or whatever we're doing, I, I'm exhausted. I'm so happy that people came and we were in the Word and we were able to share the Word and God challenged them to be closer to Him. I love that. I don't, I, I don't know whether much joy I can have than that. The, 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 uh, anyway. So I'm telling you today, be obedient to the Word of God. Sell your possessions and follow Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Is that ever being recorded? Good. <laughs> so maybe you don't want to go sell everything. You know, you got a wife and kids, you got things you have responsibility. God knows that. He wants this. He wants this was the wrong with the wealth of this young man. It wasn't his wealth that was a problem. It was right here. God spoke to his heart. God, whatever I have is yours. And whatever you want me to do, I'll do. We were uh, reminded of an old song. Can you play it? You guys got that? We were reminded of an old song uh, while we were at the conference or the, uh, the thing yesterday, um, the solemn assembly. And it, was, it goes, I surrender all. Does anybody remember that song at all? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender all. Let them sing it. I surrender all. There's a couple verses to that are really awesome that I'm going to have them sing. But would you stand with me as we close? And I'm going to open up. This is going to be something a little different today. I'm going to, I'm going to open up the front of the church here. We're going to call this an altar. And I want you to, just, as we sing this song, just examine yourself. See where you're at. Are you willing to really surrender all to Jesus? Your whole life. Your whole life. I'm 55 years old. I got a another 50 years ago, at least, you know, I'm going to surrender the rest of my life to Jesus. And I want you to take a personal time with God and just come, leave your seats, come kneel at the altar and say, God, yes, I give my life to you. If you, you haven't done that in a long time, maybe today's the day you do that. Maybe it's just today a renewing of your spirit that, yes, God, I'm reminded, yeah, all my wealth, everything that I have, everything is yours, God. I surrender all to you. Praise the Lord. Did you do that? Let's sing.